being new, you're still the professional. Correct. And I don't think people allow themselves getting into this industry. I think people allow that doubt to seep in too much at a certain point mm -hmm. and be like, these people know more than me. Right. Like, they don't. No, <laughs> they no. don't. If they did, they would hold a license. Yo, you guys are growing like crazy right now based from this year to last year. So I was looking at the numbers, Matt, and you guys um, just missed Agency Hall of Fame last year. Mm -hmm. First of all, did that piss you off? Ah, uh, it just made <laughs> just, <laughs> You can be honest. Uh, hey, well, you know, I mean, I was I was right there. I think I was you were like, close. Yeah, dude. I think I was like four or five hundred thousand. Yeah, so I was like a week or two away. Um, Got it. You know. Or not pitch up, but motivate you more. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I knew it. Okay. Yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew I was going to hit it this. You're year, like, so. no way, I'm missing that thing nah, twice. No, no, Especially no, that clip. Like, yeah. it's one thing to like, it was right you do there. five million. You're like, dude, I had no shot. It was but, right there. Yeah, but I was happy with our year anyway, so I didn't get oh, yeah, down was, about it. Right. You know? We we had a lot of growth last year. You guys grew. I mean, the the year before was what like two million. It was two point like, seven. Yeah. yeah. So you oh, you kind of damn you've tripled almost two years in a row. Uh huh. Right. You went from two point seven to nine four. So I'm not a mathematician, but three times three that. is nine, yeah. right? Most yeah. time, most calculators. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then you did, or you're at 28 now, you'll finish. What do you think you're finished at this year? 35. 35. So, you know, if you rounded that nine to 10 times three is, see, I'm, dude, I'm good at math. Next year though. should be fun. <laughs> yeah, I do. Next year you got to do 100 million. Shit. <laughs> um, but we're yeah. going to get into that in a little bit, like the key to tripling your business, because you've done it. Two years in a row now. Now, I will tell you this from experience because, you know, we've done this here. We used to double every year. Uh -huh. The bigger you get, the harder it is to double. Yeah. <laughs> then you start going, yo, 15% growth isn't bad when you're yeah, doing, yeah, you know, yeah, half yeah. a billion in oh, sales. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when That's a good problem to have, though. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> so like, you're, yeah. you're going to get there to where, like, I can't triple anymore. But, dude, if we had 10%, hey, we're I'd growing. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's all good. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, nah, man. That's awesome. But, dude, a couple things I want to talk about. So, obviously, to get to those numbers, you sell a lot of life insurance is what, what, what we do here. And um, you guys sell a lot of final expense. Final expense is a, you know, a demographic where a lot of times there's health issues going on, right? They're not the most healthiest of clients. They're older, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and writing the right business really could make or break the agent's career, your even your agency, right? If you're writing a bunch of business that doesn't get placed, For sure. nobody gets paid and nobody's covered. So what are some of the most common reasons you see policies getting declined for? Like when it's written, you know, when they're not doing it the right way and how do you educate your agents to, to know, you know, what to do properly in the home to get your client covered? I think it comes down to kind of what I was telling you before. Um, you know, when you're just getting going, you don't know anything. Yeah. And you don't know the products, you don't know how placement works, you don't know underwriting rules. So, you know, that first 60 to 90 days, you need to call your upline. And, and that, that's going to help make sure that we mitigate not only the placement issue that could arise, but also, you know, retaining that business mm. um, and putting people into the right product. Because loading an agent's lips is pretty important in the beginning. Yeah. And making sure that they're asking the right questions to identify what the customer is truly looking for, like what they need. Uh, maybe not even what they're looking for. They might think they're looking for something, but then be completely wrong. Right. A right? lot of times they don't know. Yeah, exactly. And that's where you come in as a professional and educate them and show them, you know, hey, I know you were thinking this, Mrs. Jones, but however, based off our conversation, it seems to me that you need to be into this type mm. of product. Let me explain why. You know, and, and really getting a newer, I think the, I think the fall off does come from the newer agents, not really your seasoned vets. Your sure. seasoned vets are probably got a great sales process at this point. Their follow up and their button up to the, the transaction is probably pretty good. Mm -hmm. There's no confusion with the customer. So they're going to retain business probably better than, you know, a newer agent would. So mitigating that agent that's within their first 90 days, uh, by, by, putting strong reinforcements and calling your uplines, uh, getting, getting, getting good coaching after, you know, that appointment. Yeah. Um, so you can, you can get into a position to where we can have a healthier book. Right. I think that's really important. Yeah. What, what are some of the most common reasons you're seeing people, um, clients get declined? Uh, well, so uh, that, that's, I mean, that would come down to, bad placement on the agent. And again, that's why we're focused on yeah. making sure that we, 
we alleviate that 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 possibility right because i mean the way our, our policies are underwritten like you shouldn't have many declines There's, yeah you just right. have to go with the right yeah, product you're doing right? something wrong yeah you're not asking the right questions you're not sure. being completely transparent you know even when you're trying to extract information from the customer being upfront and giving them giving them information up front by saying hey mrs jones i'm going to ask you a couple questions i apologize in advance there might be uncomfortable but i need you to be transparent with me mm. when it comes to your health because i can't truly help you unless you actually answer those honestly right because don't be scared of the fact whether we're going to be able to get you something or not get you something if i know what's going on then i can diagnose the situation and make a recommendation right. to you of what you might be able to get and who you might be able to get that yeah. with every carrier is different mrs jones right. so keep that in mind just because this carrier a won't take you doesn't mean that carrier c will or yeah. won't so just be transparent with me. That's all I ask you to do. When I ask you these health questions, just tell me what's going on. Right. And if you're transparent with me, I'll be able to help you. If you're not, I'm not going to be able to help you. So can you do that for me? Yeah. You know, it, being open with people right. and direct goes a long way. In setting sales. the expectation properly. Like, Absolutely. this is what's going to happen. Like, I love, hey, you're, the, some of these may be uncomfortable. Absolutely. But I have to ask them. It's part of my job. And even being new, you're still the professional. Correct. And I don't think people allow themselves getting into this industry. I think people allow that doubt to seep in too much at a certain point mm -hmm. and be like, these people know more than me. Right. Like, they don't. No, they no. don't. If they did, they would hold a license. Exactly. If they did, you know what I mean? So yep. like, don't be scared of the fact to just, you know, act the part for a little bit until right. you truly can own it. Yeah. And I think, I think being decently bold with people is super important, yeah. especially as you're getting going, because then you're going to, you're going to, you're going to get rid of a lot of obstacles you're going to deal with yeah. just by being transparent. I, I think the key to selling anything is understanding your client first. I think we get so caught up in like, I need to know the products, man. I need yeah. to know every bell and whistle of this. The, you need to know your client first. Yeah. And our clients, I mean, you, you do some lead, you've done lead gen before, right? Yeah. The we don't get a hundred percent of the response back. No. You get like maybe one or two percent if you're good, right. right? Like I remember back when direct mail was a big deal. Even in its heyday, you're getting maybe two percent back. Mm -hmm. So think about all the people that you're mailing to, or you're, you're running ads to, whatever, and the ones that are not applying, the yeah. ones that are skipping right past it. You're dealing with that small percentage of the population that needs help getting life insurance, mm -hmm. like or insurance in general. Mm -hmm. When I turned sixteen. Got my license. I got in, in a car. Okay. I didn't have in, car insurance. I drove to AAA, walked in and said, I need car insurance. I'm not a lead. <laughs> yeah. But that's also, I'm also not our clients. Yeah, for sure. What our clients would have done was, depending on the age, you know, went online, called some, but they would have initiated that contact and go, I need some information on car or whatever it is. But understanding that those are our clients, they're going, hey, I need some help. They don't have it all figured out. Our clients are not the guy going, Matt, I've studied life insurance for 27 yeah, years. I've been licensed yeah, eight times. Yeah. Now give me a policy that will blow yeah, me away. Yeah. You ever heard that in an appointment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've gotten somebody similar to that, yeah. but that person really didn't know anything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, they were just pretending they did. Correct. So they could feel like they had control of the sales, sure. the sales presentation or whatever. But, th but those are our clients. They yeah. don't know they what don't to know. do. And that's okay. And that's why, you know, we say helping families. Oh, we are. Because this person is sitting there going, I need some life insurance. I don't know what I need. I don't know how to get it. But I need someone to come here and show me how, how to. Yeah. You know? Um, you know, I always struggle with this segment because I overcoming objections. I hear that and I go, well, just avoid them. You don't need to overcome them. Yeah. You need to avoid them. But that doesn't mean they're not going to come up, right? Like, I think one of the most common ones is I need to think about it. Yeah, that's not an objection. No. What is that then? That's a smoke screen. Okay. There's actually uh, an objection underneath that statement. I like that. So, you know, if they need to think about it, it's just a nice way of telling you, no, they don't have enough information. Mm. So, you know, when somebody would say, I need to think about it, you know, that means it's almost too late because you haven't, you, you've created that objection by not giving them the proper information right. in your sales presentation. So, you know, asking the right questions, all of that is really important. You know, I, I love what you were saying a minute ago. Well, don't let it sh come up, okay? 
Well, you actually squash the objections before they become one Correct. through a good sales process. Yeah. But if somebody says, oh, I need to think about it, it just means they don't have enough information. They haven't heard what they needed to hear to move forward or act. So if you get to that point and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, I can respect what you're saying that you need to think about it, and I fully can appreciate that. But let me ask you a question. Out of everything that I just went through, what would you have to think about? Would you have to think about the cost of the overall product, mm -hmm. or would you have to think about whether it'd be enough coverage for your family in the event that you do pass away yeah and then isolate it down to it's really going to be a joke. they don't see the value or it's cost too much it's all Correct. it is dude Absolutely. so at least that can maybe get you back on track to where you can start pushing yeah. the sale forward and uh, a lot of people will say oh i need to think about it and then a newer person's going to be like oh okay well, well here let, let me right. give you my number here's my, and, car, yeah, here's yeah, my so number you're never yeah. going to hear from him again no ever, god no ever no, dude, I remember my first like couple of weeks out. I had all kind. We we called them go backs. I had all these go backs, man. Yeah. All this guy yeah. like, and I'd I'd be trying to sell everyone, selling myself. Like you don't understand this one couple. They don't. They call yeah. people back. Yeah, man. they're definitely they're not, coming. I love yeah. that. We, yeah. we will never leave you. And they, yeah. they 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 start going into yeah. sell. They, she's looking at him going right. We, honey, we never leave anyone yeah. hanging. No, no, never yeah. once. No, we yeah. I, he'll he'll call you back. Right, he always does. They don't call you back. Dude, we used to have this little uh, <laughs> in in timeshare. We strongly discourage be backs. So, yeah. uh, I think that's why timeshare people do transition pretty well to this because they have that that beat into their head. Like if I don't get this, One -time this close, sale right yeah. now, I'm never getting it right. again. So it's already like beat yeah. into their head. But we used to have this little like lanyard with a with a bus on it. <laughs> if somebody <laughs> would get be back and you'd have a new age a new rep come up and be like, Oh yeah, well they're gonna they took my number, they're gonna we we'd put the lanyard on them with the bus and we'd call it the be back bus. <laughs> I love that. And we'd make these people wear the be back bus so it would like get just ingrained into yeah. their head. You know what I mean? So I I I, I think uh accepting the fact that if you don't get that policy enforced that day you're not only letting that family down because they're not going to have protection but you're also letting yourself down for the future because you're allowing yourself to believe that that's possible correct so i hate when a new agent actually does get uh, a be back sale yes. because it's really bad for their mindset right. we, you know i'm so they big think on they're my, all going to be that way exactly it's like yeah. it's the worst thing ever if i hear it in the first 30 days and they get a yeah. B -back, i'm like oh god that's so dude bad. if you get one play the powerball that day Bet on, like, you're just lucky that day. That's your yeah. lucky day. Go do some shit that requires luck, yeah. you know, something. But yeah. that it's not going to be the norm. It's not good for your consistency. No. So we talked about, you know, God forbid you get to that point where they give you that objection. But what I like to talk more about is how to avoid that. So you, you start, hey, educate them more, right? So what, what are you making sure your agents do to avoid getting to think about it? Well, so if it, if it's an A to B or an A to B sale, you know, don't have insurance. That's a different style sale than somebody that does have insurance, sure. right? So these are two different types of sales presentations. But having a good sales presentation, a good sales process in place can mitigate a lot of objections that can come up your way if you follow that process. Right. What, where people start getting in trouble is they start changing what they're doing consistently to try and get different results. Like they're not, they're not giving themselves a measurable that actually will allow them to, you know, figure out if they have a predictable process or not that's getting predictable results. Right. So sales is all about predictability, doing the same thing over and over and over and over and, and get predictable results. So how do we get people to mitigate objections is by giving them a good sales process. And, you know, it starts with um, making sure that the, the agent does know that they've got to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. it doesn't It's not like they got to go play golf with them on Sunday or not. Right, you don't like be that. their best friend. But, but they need to be comfortable enough with you to where they feel comfortable to move forward right. with, with you on a transaction. Yeah, connect. Correct. You got to connect. And you know when that is, when people mm -hmm. start asking you questions. Of, that was always my thing. They start asking you questions about you. Well, now they're becoming more interested in who you are. Right. Okay. Now it's kind of time to move on. Their body language, if you're face to face, we're over we're over the phone, so we don't get to do that. But their tonality is going to sure. change when they're more receptive. You know, so getting that established rapport up front and then going into, hey, do you know how this is going to work? Doing your little intent statement, being transparent with the customer, and then doing a good discovery and and a financial. Um, analysis to figure out what's actually going to work for them yeah. what are they looking for why are they looking for it who are they trying to protect tying it to their beneficiaries 
putting them in the picture and getting them to emotionally feel that burden for their beneficiaries if they were to pass away? Good question, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Jones. If you passed away tomorrow and you didn't have any protection in place, who is that going to affect and how is that going to affect them? Right. You know, and doing things like that will, yeah, over time, get rid of the objections. And, um, you know, one's, one's a big objection you can get if you don't have a good sales process is, oh, I want to shop around. Mm-hmm. You know, well, establish yourself as a broker. You deal with a lot of different carriers. You deal with all A-plus rated carriers. You're going to shop around on their behalf to find them the lowest possible rate based off of what they need. Right. So I'm not going to show you the cheapest thing if it's not what you need. I'm Correct. not going to send you out with a Corolla when you're looking for a minivan. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to figure out through asking you questions and you being transparent with me, what's going to work for your family in the event that you need a product like this. Yeah. And then I will give you my promise if you... And when we get to the point of looking for pricing, I will shop around on your behalf based off your qualification, based off your health and your age and all of those factors and get you into a product that works for you. Yeah. It's huge. It's the small things, right? It's not just one thing you say to avoid that, but it's to your point, doing the same thing every single time, regardless of how you may or may not have prejudged that appointment. Cause I think this is where it gets messy, right? Like, you're maybe, maybe you said something over the phone, like, dude, oh yeah, I remember filling that out. I need some life insurance. All right. Now, some, especially newer ages, they now switch to, oh, I don't need to sell as much. I don't need to go through everything. He just told me he needs it. Right. He's just, he said, as long as it fits his budget, he's good. Then you go through everything or you don't go through everything. You rush to that point and then you'll get to think about it. Yeah. Dude, it may be redundant. It may seem unnecessary, but it's, it's you know, old football, it's blocks and tackles, dude. Yeah, man. That's what win, wins and loses games. It's yeah. not the trick play or it's blocks and tackles. It's yeah. the making sure you follow the same process, whether the person said, I can't wait to buy life insurance or I don't need this. Yeah. <laughs> Do the same shit. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. Um, what about this? I need to check with somebody else. You've heard this. Right? Check with my son, my financial advisor, whatever. Yeah, I mean, that that's a funny one. I think that's more of an excuse, too. Yeah, so I, that's not really an objection. A, obje- a, a true objection is going to be tied to their need or the financial state, like the, the, the right. budget. Like, you know, that that's that's a uh, I hate to say that again, but that that is more of a smoke screen. Uh, sure. You got to go talk to your financial advisor when we're talking about a ten thousand dollar final expense policy. Right. That's probably not the case. OK, Um not knocking anybody in that position yeah. by no means, but I'm saying you've got to know your audience too. So, right. you know, got to talk to my brother. What is your brother pay your mortgage? Did right. you, like, so what are we really talking about? So, you know, one thing you can do in a situation like that. Okay. No problem at all. I like to take the pressure off the customer. Hey, that's no problem at all. By all means, you want to talk to your niece's nephew about this. Yeah. Perfectly fine. But let me ask you a question based off everything I just told you. And everything that we just went through to figure out what's best for your family based off of your words, not mine. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you have a few concerns before moving forward because you wouldn't want to talk to your niece's nephew's uncle about this. Right. If it were the case, do you mind me asking what those concerns might be? Just to see if you can get back on track. Right. Well, I just want to talk to him about if we can afford it or not. Oh, okay. So the biggest... The biggest thing you need to consider right now, Mr. Jones, is that it's a little bit outside of your range on your monthly budget. Is right. that what I'm understanding? It's yeah. going to stretch you a little bit? Yeah, that's a little higher than what I need. Okay, now we can go to box and closing. Absolutely. Okay, so, okay, so let me ask you a question. If I'm able to get this cost down just a little bit but not sacrifice the value in the product that you're going to be offering or get, get offered for that, that service – is that something you'd want to consider today to see if we could even get approved? Because quite frankly, Mr. Jones, I don't even know if I can get you approved for this. Right. And then take it away a little yep. bit. You've got X, Y, and Z coming on. You've had diabetes for the last 10 years. You take metformin. You, I don't know what your medical record looks like over the last 10 years. I don't know what your AC, AC1 or your A1C is. I don't know any of that stuff. So this is what I suggest. If it's just a matter of budget, let's go ahead and put in an application with the carrier, see if we can get you approved so you actually have something to talk to your family about, right. and let's get something that fits into your budget. Does that sound good? So that's like... Yeah, just keep asking questions. Yeah. Just stay, remain calm. Don't get all upset. Don't stuck. Because a lot of people, oh, objection time. You start arguing. You might as well just hang the phone up. Dude, that yeah, doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that don't Water work. Water and vinegar. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mix. So just right. like, that's why sales is all about question-based selling. Mm-hmm. Ask a question, get the customer to answer. It keeps them engaged. And it also lets you, it lets you get a gauge of where they are 
and truly are in whether they want to move forward or not. It's right. just an excuse. The, the the financial advisor or any of that, that's just an excuse. Oh, yeah. And most 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 salespeople do fall victim to that. Sure. Oh, yeah, they're going to talk to their brother, and they're going to call me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, Matt, their brother knows a lot about life insurance. Yeah. Like, does he have a license? No. Yeah. Like, just ask questions. Yeah, why do like, you go online and fill out a exactly. questionnaire for life insurance? Like, dude, if you're thinking it, just ask it. But let me ask you something. Yeah. So did did your brother tell you to fill this out? Yeah. No. Do you always run things? Like, when you bought this house, was he involved? No, not at all. Okay, okay so what do we do? Also, we're making an application right now. Yeah. What is there to talk to him? You haven't even got approved yet. Right. If anything, get approved. You get a 30 day free look, dude. Look at it then. Yeah. But right now, what do you look? You got nothing. Yeah. You're going to ask him if you should apply for a life insurance that's policy. Like that talk, you uh, yeah. That's like, that's like, uh, <laughs> that's like acting like we need to talk about what the weather is in two weeks from now when we right. can't see the forecast. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't matter. You know, so. Yeah. No, I, and, and it, it is, it, it is, I agree. It's a smoke screen. Yeah. And like a lot of things in our business, it falls back on you. If you're getting that, there's something you did wrong, something you didn't do, but it's something about you that brought that out. Yeah, for sure. Because they didn't need to check with their financial advisor when they filled out the form, when they went online, when they answered the phone, when they booked the appointment, whatever your situation. But they didn't do that to meet with you. Then it's like, I always looked at it like this. We got someone who's interested in life insurance. All, all the things that had to have happened for you to even have this appointment, number one, whether it was something they got in the mail, whether it was an online form, they filled it out. They put all their information correctly, because we've all gotten leads with wrong info, right? Wrong phone. They did the correct information. They answered. And if you set up an appointment, they were there when you got there, <laughs> which, I mean, you're a telesales guy. It's about 50-50, right, if they're going to show up. They did all those things. Then we introduce you, and now they want to think about it. What was the, the, the what, what changed? You did. We put you into the picture. It's like, Sean, you say all the time, the guy was interested in life insurance until they met you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What'd you do? Yeah. You know, and I think that it's, I think I, I do know that in order to get better at this, you have to accept that, that my success is going to be purely based on me. It's extreme accountability. Absolutely. Man. Yeah, it's extreme accountability. Somebody can't be coachable unless they're accountable. Right. You can't get better unless you're accountable. So like, again, having that conversation with the agent up front is going to better prepare them for their journey in development in this new space. Sure. You know, or even if they come from a life insurance space from a different, you know, competitor or something. It's right. like, dude, whatever you know there, please just. Yeah. Move it away and give us a true chance at your success. Because if you were ultra successful at what you were doing with that other a company, you, you probably wouldn't be sitting in front of me. Dude. So, like, let's yeah. let's just call an apple an apple yeah. and cut it down off the tree and be real with one another. Yeah. You were not successful where you were at. Right. You're looking for an opportunity to be successful. Sure. It starts with you. Absolutely. Um, that's awesome, by the way. Last thing. We touched on this in the beginning. I'm just going to ask you straight up. Dude, what, what is the key to triple in your business. You've done it two years in a row. What's, I mean, I'm sure it's not one thing, yeah. but give me a few things. Oh man. It's that, that is a very, very big broad sure. question, right? Like, it's like there's been so much work that's went into it. So, yeah. um, I think, it, I think it comes down to the team that you, your infrastructure, the people that you put around you that have this, they, they can buy into the vision that they believe that they can do more, that they want to help people, that they want to truly help change the lives. Mm. I think, I think all of that really is what sets the tone to be able to hit certain goals. Yeah. I, I, without, without that, without the right people, you know, in, in, in your, in your, in your, in your hole, like it's, it's not gonna, it's not right. gonna work. So it does start with the team for sure. Sounds like um, culture. Yeah, culture is huge. Yeah. We're all about culture. We're, you know, we're really big on culture. Uh, but infrastructure is important too. Yeah. It's, infrastructure is super important. Um, I believe that we, I would put this up against anybody that wants to see. Like, I believe we've got probably the best infrastructure yeah. in the company. Uh, just from things that we do and and I'm not knocking anybody I'm sure no. there's great I I'm just I'm I believe in Numbers our, don't lie. Though. I believe in our agency sure. and our people so much that we've put so many pieces in place that we've made our 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 business so foundationally structured right. like it 
like we have an on board like i mean i could go i could give you a dissertation about all the infrastructure that we put in place but i think that gives people um more stability yeah you know what i mean so it's not like a guessing game for people right like, we're giving people a business in a box and we're saying this is how you do it Correct. we've already made all the mistakes man yeah like we made yep. a lot of them yep. like you can avoid these pitfalls just here's your business in the box just run with it what you do with it is up to you right and i think um by being very transparent having a great culture great leadership in place and having infrastructure is what's leading to those results yeah i i agree to it's it's i mean culture is everything you live and die by it right and but to your point you got to have both having a great culture it's like attitude activity yeah you could be the hardest worker in the world but the most negative person in the world you won't be successful i will say this too though having such a high expectation in yourself in your organization mm -hmm. to where you won't accept if people are not in line with that overall expectation right. so this past year i severed from a million dollar organization yeah I was not scared of it. I'm not saying, oh, pat on the back. Sure. I think that that's important. Like, you have to have such confidence in your team that if mm -hmm. if something is not in line with that, right. you know your your team has got you, and it's okay to just yep. separate. Don't be scared to walk away from people just because they're a producer. Or, right. Like, if they're not in line, like, it could be morally, ethically, compliantly. It could be just mm -hmm. values aren't the same, or they just don't operate within our organization the way that we want to. Right. You're taking all the risk with these people. Sure. Dude, if they don't fit the culture, cut them out. Cut they're them cancer. Out. Cut them out. Cancer spreads. And this, so this group was doing plenty of volume, and, you know. Yeah. I, we, just, we just moved on. But if you didn't do that, it's, it's also, like, you can have a great culture, but if you have that cancer there, how quick it spreads to everybody else, right? Because you said this on your true talk, misery loves company, right? Negativity. So even though you're doing a great job of staying positive, but that starts seeping in, and next thing you know, there's a lot more people acting that way, feeling that way. Now your culture's screwed. Well, you catch people in lies, too. That's Absolutely. You know, one lie is a fib. Yep. Two's, two's probably a catastrophic right. bomb <laughs> coming my way. So. You know, you start catching people in lies and they're not being transparent with you. I've been transparent with you from day one. Right. We've been transparent with you with day one. What makes, why are we going outside of that overall expectation yeah. that we have for all of our individuals? We don't lie to our, we don't, we don't lie people into a situation. Right. With, so like, and that starts with you. Yeah. It starts with the person at the top. So yeah. it's like if, if, the, if that culture is not right from the beginning, you're going to attract the wrong people, yeah. you know? And you mentioned this earlier when on this, the belief level. Like you believe in yourself, you believe in your agents. Yes. It starts there. Yeah. I think good culture, belief, infrastructure, and you got to work. Got to work. That's a piece a lot of people, I got all the other stuff, Mike. That, that's wonderful, dude. When are you going to go to work, though? Yeah, yeah, you got to bust your ass. <laughs> like, I'm positive. I, I share motivational memes all the time, Matt. Like, that, that's great, dude. But when are you going to actually engage and do something? Yeah, I'm busy not sharing that stuff yeah. because I'm so busy. <laughs> right. right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with social media. I think it's a great tool. Sure. But um, I think organic growth is really great, too. Yeah. If you do things the right way and people know that you have their best interests in mind and they truly feel that, they will be happy where, where they're going to work. Right. And if they're happy, they're making money, they're recruiting, things things become never easy, but l they feel a little easier at times. Absolutely. And then something shows its dirty little face, and yeah, you've got to try and fix that. So. Right. Well, yeah, dude, I appreciate good. everything you do, everything you've been doing. I'm leading by example. So, you know, next year you got to do $100 million since we're doing this triple thing, dude. I don't know how we'll we'll hold you to it. <laughs> but, no, I, all jokes aside, it's awesome, yeah. you know, going from – you know, just under 10 to now over 30 million. Um, and I think the, the best part about it is what it does for everybody around you, that winning culture. And that's the, like, what kind of, you need a winning culture. And you believing in them a lot of times before they believe in themselves is, is huge. So keep doing what you're doing, though. Yes, sir. Appreciate Thank it. Yeah, Guys, appreciate um, it. hit subscribe if you're not already. Share this, like this, and you know where you can find us every week right here on The Next Level. Also, January. End of January. We'll see you in Dallas, Texas. Go to FFLConvention.com. Get registered now. Book your room. We have a room block at the Westin where you can save you some money, about about 500 bucks through the course of the week. So book that ASAP while they're still available, and we'll see you soon. Thanks again, dude.